because we yes. all feel the Lord mm -hmm. the same. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so with the help of the Lord, I'm going <clears> to <throat> teach and preach what, what the Lord put in my heart. Amen. I figure I'd, I might as well teach this because, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it. Um, I have entitled this, Thou Shall Not Kill. Amen. Thou Shall Not Kill, including thyself. Mm -hmm. Right? Including thyself. Amen. And like, like I said, uh, the, um, the title pretty much says it all. I thought I'd preach it because, you know, that's what we walked into when we went. <clears throat> we went to uh, California this Monday and Monday. Well, we went Sunday, but Monday morning we went. We were gonna go have breakfast, and that's what we walked into. Um, <clears throat> someone, you know, they uh, they put an end to their life, you know, and. Uh, Figure I, I might as well preach it because, you know, that's what they say. You know, when something happens, you know, you know, it triggers others to to do the same. You know, it, like they say, misery loves company. You know, and this spirit, it also loves company. That's why when someone does it, you'll hear of a few others that do the same. <clears throat> Let's see, so I'm going to read Exodus 20.13. And then I'll read Matthew 5.21. So in Exodus 20.13, these are, this is part of the Ten Commandments, and and although it was part of the Ten Commandments, the Lord came and He, He fulfilled the, the law of Moses, okay, and we're still not supposed to do, do this, okay. Thou shall not kill. That's what it says in Exodus twenty thirteen. Thou shall not kill. Amen. That was part of the Ten Commandments, and like I said, the um, the Lord came and He fulfilled it. But we're still not supposed to do the same. We're still not supposed to kill. Okay, the consequences are different now. Okay, the uh, or should I say the administration? Um, let us pray, dear God, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor that I have to stand before your people and to teach and to preach what you put in my heart. In Jesus' name, let these words not return back empty, Lord. Let them go and do what they're supposed to do in the name of Jesus. And like always, Lord, we invite your presence into this place, Lord. Let your glory fill this house that you may walk and dwell amongst your people. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. You may be seated. Like I said, this <clears throat> in Exodus 20, 13, it's part of the law of Moses and the Lord came and he fulfilled the law. Okay, And although they weren't supposed to kill then, they're not supposed to kill now in the church age. Right. The, um, the administration is different. Back then they had a, they had a knife for an eye. <clears throat> okay. You killed. You were supposed to be killed. Likewise, okay. It was, you know, it was the same thing. Okay. Um, I didn't look up the scripture, but um, <clears throat> now the Lord says that vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord in Romans twelve nineteen. If you wanted to see it, you know. Now we don't. We don't take vengeance upon ourselves. Yeah. You know, we were we were that kind of people before, but we're not that kind anymore. Yeah. We don't 
pay evil with evil and eye for an eye, you know. We don't do likewise. We, the Lord says, vengeance is mine. He'll take care of it. Amen. We'll, we just make a mess of things. We'll make a mess of things. In, but like I said, in Exodus <coughs> um, 2013, that was in the law. That was under the law. And um, you all remember the, uh, the first murder that ever took place? Mm -hmm. was Cain. Cain killed his brother Abel, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, in Genesis 4, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him, see? And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? <clears throat> and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. See, and verse 11, And now art thou cursed from the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood. From thy hand, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. See, See notice how he, he wasn't killed. Cain wasn't killed for, for doing the same thing, for killing his brother, right? That, that happened, like I said, in, in the, um, under the law of Moses. Under the law of Moses, he would have been slain, but, and uh, this, you know, he, 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 he wasn't slain. There was a consequence that happened, but that was it. He wasn't, he wasn't killed. And, and like they say, you know, um, if you want to see what, what the church age is like, you know, read the book of Genesis. Read the book of Genesis. And, and here in the book of Genesis, he wasn't killed. And now in, in the church age, if anything happens like that, we, the Lord forgives, right? The Lord forgives, amen, because we serve a living God that's loving and caring and a forgiving God. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we don't participate um, as part of the... Uh, I'll start over. We don't participate in death penalty cases, you know, because we don't pronounce a judgment. When you when you participate in a in a death penalty case, that's what you would be doing. You'd be pronouncing a judgment, a judgment that only belongs to the Lord. Right. He's the one that that kills, he, or I should say, he's the one that that gives life and he's the one that takes it. It's in his time, in his time, not in our time, you know. In, uh, I'm gonna read Matthew 5, 21. Matthew 5, 20, 21 says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. <clears throat> so we don't, we don't kill. Thou shalt not kill, it says. And there was another one. Maybe I'll read it. Let's go to Matthew nineteen eighteen. Let's see what that one says. <clears throat> it 
He saith unto him, Which? Let me see. I'll start with verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? <clears throat> Jesus said, Thou shalt not, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay, so there it is again. So we don't we don't do that. We don't commit murder. Okay, and, and like I said, we um <clears throat> we don't participate in in the death penalty because it's a judgment that belongs to the Lord. Amen. You know, we, we just ask to be excused, right? <clears throat> ask to be excused. We, um, that's one of the reasons why we don't, um, we don't go into the military, for one. We don't do the military. We don't do. We don't do um, certain jobs. We don't do certain jobs. Right? Mm -hmm. Some people become police officers, and well, when you're when you're confronted with that situation, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. You're gonna mm -hmm. shoot and kill someone, right? And that's one thing we, we, we avoid with the help of the Lord. Yes. And only with the help of the Lord. It's too easy not to. It's too easy to, to do the other. Okay. But with the help of the Lord, we, we don't. Okay, so we have to choose our occupation wisely. You know, some people, they... Who knows, maybe they have these jobs or go into the military and and pray and hope that they don't never go to war. You know, because they, they take these occupations lightly. They go into them for certain reasons. You know, maybe they want, they're there to, to get the GI Bill or whatever, you know, take advantage and go to college, you know. Those are the wrong reasons. Those are wrong reasons to, to, to join the military and to have certain jobs, right? Knowing that that's what could happen. Okay. You know, um, as for abortion, it, you know, I was, <clears throat> I was asked one day. Uh, how I vote or why why I do the, vote the way I vote and and they asked is it because of abortion I said no I, I don't you know abortion it's it's a personal choice it's a personal choice and and uh, you know it could it I'll just as for abortion it's a personal choice and don't don't get me wrong just because i say it's a choice you know it gives people the right to choose and say oh yeah the pastor said it was a choice no i'm not done yet <clears throat> no i'm not done yet you know when they uh, the lord he gives us a choice he um in concerning the um the veil concerning the veil there's a I think there's a word there and people say contention maybe see if I could find it there's a word there and, <clears throat> and people see that and they say see they, they think there's it's a, that it's a way out and it's not a way out just because I said what I said. Let's see. 
It says contention. Right here in verse 16 it says, in 1 Corinthians 11, 16 says, But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. So, however they interpret it, you know, people think, well, you know, there's no, there's no contention, there's no, you know, whatever we want to do, you know, whatever we want to do. But no, it's not whatever we want to do, it's <clears throat> what does the Lord want us to do? Amen. So you, if, even if I said it's a personal choice, it is a personal choice, right? It's a personal choice and it's not what goes into the man that defiles him. It's what comes out. It's what comes out. What you do is what defiles you. It's what you do with that choice that's going to defile you. Okay. You would be taking the life of a child. That's what a person would be doing when they, when they uh, do an abortion. Okay. And you say, oh, he's not a child. He's, he's not even a baby. You can call him a fetus, an embryo. And another word was a vertebrate, mm. you know, and whatever else, whatever titles they want to name or call this, this, this baby, this life in the womb, whatever they want to call it, it's still life. It's still a life that, that is precious before the Lord, amen, yes, amen. you know, and Let's go to Psalm 51, 5. Psalm 51, 5 says, <clears throat> this is the apostle, or not the apostle. This is King David. He says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. It says, in sin did my mother conceive me. You know, it doesn't really say much about his mom. Okay, but he, that's what it says. So it doesn't matter how the child was conceived, right? It doesn't matter. There is no, there's no reason or an excuse as to why someone would want to abort a child. Okay. Amen. It doesn't matter. Here, King David says, in sin was he conceived. So it doesn't matter how it was conceived. It's still a child. It doesn't matter if if the doctors, what the doctors say. Even if it is legal in the country, you have that choice to give life or to take it. You have that choice that, or to take that life away. It doesn't matter if the doctors give the okay, yeah. right? right? It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It's still wrong. It's still a sin, no matter what the doctors say. Yeah. They would just be an accomplice to your sin, and they would have to give an answer they, they have to give an answer to the things that they say right. or do. You know, so, yes, abortion, it's wrong, it's a sin, and, and the reason why, why I said what I said to this person, this man at work, I said, you know what, it's a choice. It's a choice, even if it's legal in this country, it's still a choice. But that's not why I vote the way I vote. Because it, it could be wrong in this country, but if every woman chose to, to do the right thing, then what? It, it doesn't matter, right? 
It didn't, doesn't matter if it's legal or not. It's what are you going to do about it. It becomes a personal, it becomes a personal thing, a personal issue, a personal thing between you and God. Right. Right? And if you choose to do the right thing, and everybody chooses to do the right thing in this world, mm -hmm. if everyone chooses to do the right thing, it didn't matter if it was law. It didn't matter if, if they okayed it in the country, right? It doesn't matter. But just so you know, I told him, I'm going to vote the way I vote because we're gonna, this person's going to get us closer to the one world government. He's going to get us one closer to the one world government. And that's one thing that that you ain't going to have a choice. Right. You ain't going to have a choice in that. Right. It's coming. This one world government is coming. Right. And if you can, like the Word of God says, he who now lets it will there until he be taken out of the way. So if you're going to let it, then it'll happen sooner. Right. But if we, if we keep it from happening that much sooner, then the Lord will, the Lord will, with the help of the Lord, he'll, he'll keep extending his, his, um, his mercy. Right. What's that word say? Um, there's that word that means, um, I forgot the word. Terry. No, it's not Terry, it's, um, It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. But it's long suffering. That's the word, long suffering. So the Lord, He's long suffering. That's why He hasn't come back because He's long suffering. He's being patient. That's what it means. Long suffering just means patient. He's being patient. So when we, uh, when we stand in the gap and we pray and we intercede and, and we don't want these things to happen right away, the Lord is being long-suffering. He's long-suffering. He's being patient. Yes. But like I said, going back to, to the abortion, you know, it's, it's wrong and, and it's, it's a personal thing. It's between you and God. It's between you and God. Amen. Just because I say it's a personal choice, it is. It's a personal choice, and we expect that, that you make the right choice. Amen. Make the right decision. Amen. So, so make the right decision, because it is sin. It's still, it's still killing. You're still committing murder right. in a different way, in a different word. In a different word, it's still murder. Amen. And it's, it's still wrong. And then you're, you're pronouncing a judgment. Or I'm not even going to say a judgment, but you're just taking a life. You're taking that opportunity of the newborn babe of coming into this world. Does it have a soul? That's a different question, right? Does it have a soul? Yes, sir. Huh? Probably not. It probably doesn't have a soul. Okay. It doesn't have a soul because it didn't take that breath of life. Okay. When the Lord breathed into Adam, he became a living soul. Okay. That breath of life. The breath of life. So no, this, this uh, human being, this, this embryo, whatever you may want, want to call it, this child, doesn't have a soul yet. One that would give an account. Okay. So, so now 
back to this. Those that believe the lie and take their own life, think that they're living this life of hopelessness, this life of depression, this life of misery, whatever, whatever, for whatever reason they think that ending their life is worth it. You know, they, they're just believing the lie. They're believing the lie of the devil that comes to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. They're believing that lie. They're believing the lie to do it. Do it. Do it. Huh? Do it. You know, I, I remember my just talking to my sister over the phone over the phone and she was telling me these things. And I don't know if she was high on drugs or what, but you know, she was telling me that these she was hearing these voices, these demons telling her to kill herself. To kill herself. She was in the kitchen and they told her, get a knife and kill yourself. Get a knife and kill yourself. And she took off running out the door. She ran out of the house. She ran out of the house because, you know, I I love this story of a the, um, the demoniac of the gatherings. The demoniac of the gatherings because. The Lord, He always gives us the worst case scenario. He always gives us the worst case. The worst case. What can, what could be the worst thing that could happen? Well, the demoniac of the Gadarenes, he had a legion of demons. He had a legion of demons, which is well over 2,000. Well over 2,000. I think some... I forgot, it's been a while, but... Maybe even six. 6,000 maybe. 10,000. 10, maybe even 10,000. And I don't even know how many pigs there were. I think there was 2,000 pigs. The of the Gadarenes. So yeah, there was... In Mark 5, 13 says, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. So there was about 2,000 swine, 2,000 pigs that drowned in the sea. They choked in the sea. So if, if there's 10,000 in a legion, Five thousand each. See, and so however many there is or was, that's what this man had. This man had that many demons inside of him. And the Bible says that when he saw Jesus, he ran to him. He ran to Jesus because this legion of demons couldn't keep this man from killing himself. Yes, he would cut himself. He would cut himself in the tomb, you know, in, in this cemetery. He, that's what he would do. He'd cut himself. But over, well over 2,000 demons couldn't keep him from killing himself. You know, he, he ran to Jesus. Let's see, where's that at? In, I'll, I'll just read in Mark 5 1 says 
And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. It says, Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man can, could bind him. No, not with chains. See, they couldn't bind him. They couldn't chain him because he would just break the chains. He would break the chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. See, they couldn't tame him because he had this many demons. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. See, that's what happens when someone is demon-possessed. They're crying and cutting, him, cutting themselves with stones or with whatever object there may be. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. See, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. See, that's what they were saying. These, this, legion, this legion of demons was saying, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. See, all this, all these, this many demons, they couldn't keep this man from, from killing himself. But when they went into the swine, they did what they were, what they do. They did what they do. Right? They, they went into the swine and they did what the devil came to do, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that's what these swine did. They killed themselves. See? Some, some have said, see, the swine had more sense. No, the, the swine had no sense. The swine don't have a, a mind that you and I have. They don't have a soul that has to give an account. See, they don't have that willpower that you and I have. And these swine, they did what the devil does. Kill them. Because that's what they do. See, they weren't going to be happy unless they did what they had to do. But they couldn't keep this man. That means that it doesn't matter how many demons a person may have. They might have the worst case. At the worst case, they might have a legion. But even if they have a legion, they can still be saved. They can still run to Jesus. They, they don't have to succumb to to them, to their will, right, to yeah. the will of the enemy. Right. They don't have to succumb to it. Yeah. You don't have to, because right. you got God inside of you, yes. right? If you're a child of God and you got God inside of you, you you got God inside of you. All you have is these demons outside of you, because they can't even come inside. Because you're possessed by the Holy Ghost. Right, yeah. You're possessed by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right? Yeah. You got God inside of you. These demons are outside of you. 
they're oppressing you than telling you to kill yourself. See, they, they can't even come inside of you and, and tell you to cut yourself. Or cut yourself, cut you all up on their own. They have to tell you to do it. Mm -hmm. You got so much. You got the mind of Christ. Right, you have the mind of Christ, and you can. You don't even have to go there. You don't even have to listen to them. Turn them off. Yes, Put some gospel music and turn them things off. Right, they have to flee. Yes. Right. So you don't have to go there, yeah. and then. The Lord cast them into the swine. They they choked. They choked in the in the sea. And uh, let's see where it is. Where's the sea? And they came. Verse fifteen. Mark five fifteen says. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Yeah. See that? Yes. And they were afraid. Mm -hmm. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And also concerning concerning the swine. Now I won't even read the rest, but when the devil, when the Lord sets you free, you're free indeed, and you're clothed and in your right mind. Right, yeah. So you don't even have to listen to what these devils tell you. That's right. This this man that did this to himself Monday morning, you know, he gave in. He gave in, and for whatever reason, whatever was going on in his life, you know, he believed the lie. He believed the lie, thinking that everything was going to be over. Everything was going to be all right after this. You know, all the troubles that he might have had. All the troubles he might have had, and he might have thought, this will take care of it. Well, in the twinkling of an eye, he woke up and found himself. It was the beginning of trouble. Okay. It was the beginning of eternity. Seventy years old. Seventy years old ain't even a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. That's right. Compared to eternity that that a person's gonna spend away from God. Amen. In the place of torment because they believe the lie. Amen. Mm. So while there's life, there is hope. Yes. While there's life, there's hope. Yes. There's hope while there's life, right? Amen. You know, there's forgiveness. Yes. There's forgiveness for those that have committed a mm -hmm. murder, have committed abortion. There's forgiveness. Yes. There's forgiveness. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you didn't know any better before you gave your life to the Lord, but now you do, and yeah. now you know that you've been forgiven. Amen. You've been forgiven, and the Lord has forgotten. It's all under the blood, right? Yes, yeah. It's all under the blood. It doesn't matter what anyone may say. Right. It doesn't matter what anyone may say. I know I've worked, I've worked alongside of people that um, they say, you know what, I don't believe in 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 prison um, prison repentance those that have gone to prison and gave their life to the Lord in prison he says I don't believe in that you know but for whatever reason they that they don't believe in repentance you know maybe they uh, they had a bad encounter but it don't matter where you get your forgiveness, whether it's in a prison cell or in an apostolic Pentecostal. I should not, let me put it this way. I'll put some qualifiers. 
Okay, because those that are in prison, okay, maybe they have repented, but only if they've given their life to the Lord the way the Bible teaches, then you can you can believe that repentance. Okay, the Lord forgave them and forgot it. Okay, but you know, because there's apostolic Pentecostal ministry prison ministries out there. So those are the qualifiers. Those are the ones that that I believe that the Lord, I believe those were sincere. They were sincere when they gave their life to the Lord and, and they started a new walk in the Lord. Okay. They started off the right way. They found themselves an apostolic Pentecostal ministry preacher in there. And someone baptized them in Jesus' name, and the Lord forgave, and He forgot their sin, forgot their sins, everything they ever committed. The Lord forgot, forgave, and forgot. So that's that's what we have. Amen. We have repentance in in Jesus' name. And it's all under the blood. That's right. It's all under the blood. That's, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what anybody may say. You know, the Lord forgave you and forgot all about it. You know, you still have your memory that you have to deal with, right? Yeah. And uh, just forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and leave it under the blood. That's right. Yeah. Forgive yourself yeah. and leave it there. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what you've done. The Lord forgave and He forgot it. That's Amen. Right. So that's that's pretty much it. That's all that I have. And you know we um, you know we don't have to go there. Right. We don't have to listen to those voices. Amen. Like I said, I wanted to teach and preach on on this. You know this. Killing oneself, suicide, right? Mm -hmm. It's they call it suicide, and and it's it's a sin. It's a sin. With the um, the one that killed themselves was Judas, right? He turned. He uh, went and did what he did and. You know, he was, he was in sin. He was in sin. And when he did that, so he lost out. He lost out. Okay. So those that do those things, they lose out. Okay, they lose out. Don't, don't believe the lie that everything's going to be okay. Okay. Don't believe the lie. And if you know anyone that's gone through those situations, those thoughts, you know, there's, there's a better way, there's a better life. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord, He comes to give life and life more abundantly. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. He gives life more abundantly. Amen. So come to the altar and give it to the Lord. Like I said, if you know someone that that's struggling with those thoughts, you know, just encourage them in the Lord. Yes. Encourage them in the Lord. And, you know, if you have to read them the worst case scenario. And I just read um, Mark chapter 5. But there was two of them. There was two demoniacs. It's in Whatever it was, either Matthew or whatever book, you'll find that there was two demoniacs. Okay, so if they each had a legion, that's, that's a lot. And it just goes to show you that they love company. They love company. They like to possess someone else. Read them, read, read them that story that there's hope. There's hope. 
this man that had the legion. The Lord set him free, Amen. and he can set them free. Amen. 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 He can yes. set them free. They don't have to miss out. And, you know, it's too bad that we came at the time we came. You know, who knows? Who knows what could have happened if we would have got there sooner? Right, amen. Who knows if someone would could have, would have tried to to intervene? Who knows? Maybe he would have shot them too. You know, who knows? All I know is the Bible says the devil comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Come, come to the altar. And Get that life. Yes, amen. Life more abundantly. Amen. amen.